So today I'm going to focus on spheres. In the last class, we discussed uh, the how do we map the sphere on the plane. The map is conformal. Another map is maps the sphere to a ceiling. So that map preserves the area. That's very interesting. Always preserves the angles, always preserves the areas. <clears throat> and those are the three important uh, maps we can use in, uh, in science, actually, right? So today, I'm going to try to understand the triangles on the sphere. So before we do that, uh, let's recall the conformal map we have we constructed before, right? We call the special conformal mapping, right? So here's a sphere, okay? This is a plane, okay? We have the map which preserves the angles. The sphere is in the x, y coordinates, right? right? And the plane is also in the x, y coordinate system. That is z equals zero. Okay, now how to construct the map? Geometrically, the construction is very simple. What I'm going to do is, I put two surfaces into one place. And this is a sphere. That's my plane. You see, you have to learn how to draw a picture. Okay. So if this is a point, uh, P or Q does matter. So if you use a P, then the other point is called Q. Okay. So if you use a Q, and that coin point is called a P. Use the F. How can I find the P? The point P is, is can be determined by this line. Going through from North Pole to the South Pole. And that's my uh, effort. Too. Okay. So the next step is to, to find the to find as a, as a coordinates. Okay. The first one is Q <coughs> is XYZ as coordinate. Then P is going to be the image, right, which has uh, two components. Right? And we call it x to the y to the. Now, how does x to the y to the depend? And this, this is given by the formula. We, we already figured out how to do it. Okay. Now, if you identify, okay, uh, the next one is uh, we can have a uh, we can uh, uh, we're trying to find uh, this way, okay? Um, we need to find uh, the surface chart, surface patch for the sphere. Okay, how can I do that? Okay, I'm trying to find a map for U and the V, and this is the whole line, okay? This is the map on sigma one. Okay, that's a sigma with a UV. And I have another one. Uh, this is uh, also from U and the V, okay? And that's for the sigma uh, two for the plane. Okay, this is the S2, and that is the S1. It's complicated, right? But, uh, so sigma two is simple. This UV is going to be a U and the V and zero, okay? And the sigma bound one should be uh, should has a foreign property sigma one with a circle f composed should be equal to uh, the same point as sigma two. Okay. So what is sigma one? Okay. You can uh, since F is a in, you know in the space, its map is can be a little bit. So sigma one UV is going to be the universe up there. Okay. 
So uh, actually, actually it's going to be, if this is X, Y, Z, and this is going to be F, okay? U, V, and zero, right? So one can find out the formula. It's easy to find out, right? It's just, uh, all I have to do is uh, look at the picture here again. And this is here, right? And draw the line. And here's a U and the V and the zero. That's my point P, that's a Q. And the Q is X, Y, Z. And then you can, you can quickly uh, uh, find the coordinates for X, Y. So actually X is going to be two U u squared plus v squared plus one. y is going to be 2v, u squared plus v squared plus one. And z is going to be u squared plus v squared minus one, and uh, u squared plus v squared plus one. All right, so that's what we got. Now I'm going to, what I want to do is uh, in, in complex analysis, Uh, analysis I guess. Yeah, complex okay in complex analysis the complex as a as a C C okay this is identified was was R2 okay so that means uh, a vector okay and A plus, uh, uh, A plus B corresponds to A and B, okay? So a point in the plane corresponds to a part complex number. Okay, so I probably can find, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a picture again. I will keep using the picture for this, yeah, okay. Z and X and Y. This is my plane. This is my plane. Okay, the plane, it's S2. And this is S1. So the plane S2 is the same as this R2. Through the map, uh, this is a S2, right? This is actually the R2, right? R2, we have the map here, sigma 2 from R2, okay? Now, this R2 is also identified with C, right? Not just C, just C. So you have a, uh, you have actually have a map. This is a point Q. Right. Find Q, let's find P. The point of P is, and that's identification, the point of P can be viewed as a number, a complex number. Uh, so this is my F, and uh, it's on S from S1 to S2, right? So here's S1, to S2, and S2 to R2, that's a sigma R2, the universe, right? Or that one. And then this is a identification, and how can I, uh, uh, well, you can you can call it as a map. So, so let's write down. So then you you map the S one that's a sphere, okay, onto onto 
onto the um, com a complex plane. This is a complex plane. Right, the set of all complex numbers form a plane. All right, so let's find out, uh, let's find out uh, the relationship, okay? I want to, uh, what I want to do is I want to find the expression for the, for the, for the universe here. Yeah. Find the expression for the universe. Okay. Which is from C to S2. How can I do that? Okay, so the idea is very simple. Uh, this is going to be, okay, uh, let's say u plus iv, okay? u plus iv is the same as f inverse sigma 2 u and v, right? So it's going to be same as, as this, u and v and 0. And then we already have the formula for that. And that is going to be uh, 2u u square plus v square plus one. Two v u square plus v square plus one. And the next one is u square plus v square minus one u square plus v square plus one. Okay. Now what does that mean? This is x, y, z, right? So, uh, so if you let W be a complex number, okay, maybe, uh, yeah, okay, then W, okay, then the W bar is going to be U plus IV, right? U minus IV. Okay, so W plus W bar is a 2U, okay? W minus double by is in two IV. Okay, the norm of W is going to be U square plus V square and uh, and uh, and the square root, right? Okay, using this notation, I can write down the formula in a slightly different way. That's will be W plus W bar, and this is the length square plus one. And here, W minus W, I get I here, so I divide by I. Okay, and the third one is norm square minus one, norm square plus one. All right, so that is a, a map from C2, uh, from C2 to, to, uh, to yeah, okay. That helps you to do some other computation with the complex uh, variables. Okay, so this is a nice one. Okay, we find the map. So this is a, yeah, yeah pi definition. What is a pi, right? Pi is a, R2 is identified with C, right? Then just, uh, this is just by definition. This is going to be yeah, defined by this formula. That's a definition, okay? So, I, uh, that's about uh, the map, you know. My next topic is about what are the shortest curves on the, on the, on the sphere? What are the shortest curves? Uh, yeah. Shortest passes on the sphere. That's our topic. 
<coughs> the theorem says that. For any point P and the Q, right? We assume that PQ are not going to be zero. Is them together. So we now use a, a, a those sorts of vectors, right? It's not necessary to, you know, P could be here, Q could be here, okay? Any two points. Uh, if the other sum is going to be zero, means it's the opposite to each other. When it can be with the north part or the south part. Okay. There is a unique curve of shortest lengths. Joining P and the Q, right? And uh, this is a, which must be the, which is a, which is a, a portion of the greater circle, which is a short greater circle plus joining P and the Q. Okay? In other words, uh, uh, yeah, you can determine okay, the, sh the short greater circle. Which is a short to be a by joining P and Q. Okay, so that means I guess you need to pass. Okay, this is a uh, this is what we use. You know, when you when you sit in an airplane, right? You can fly from New York to to Australia somewhere. Then you, if you look at the world map, you think you're going to go straight to line. From New York City to, to uh, a city in Austria. But actually, if you look at the monitor on the anchor, this is a, it's a curve. Actually, this is a, it's a grass circle. Okay? But the grass circle, when you draw the grass circle uh, on the world map, it's, it's pretty strange. Okay? So it does not look like this is the shortest curve. So we want to uh, we want to show that this is true, right? And that means other other curves has a longer lens. Right? Any other curve has a longer lens. Okay. So through that, we just needed to look at the special case because you can always locate. Uh, you can always locate. Uh, the point is a sphere, so that uh, so that this is a point Q, that's point Q, right? Q is not a source pole. P is a north pole. We can set P to be this, right? And this is a what is Q? Q can even assume that uh, this is a uh, yeah, if this angle is a, is a, is alpha, okay, then it'll be psi alpha, right? Yeah. Psi alpha, zero, cos alpha. Okay, right? Now, for the sphere, we have a natural parametrization, which is going to be theta and P, right? How do you describe it? It's going to be cosine theta, cosine P, cosine theta, sine P, and the sine theta. Right, what do you say that here? And theta is between zero and the pi, the P is between zero and the two pi. Okay. Right. So the picture shows that 
if this is a point here, that's my theta, right? Yeah, this is a theta. And uh, and then you project it to here, right? Then you have an angle C. So angle C is from zero to three pi, and the sine theta. Come on, this should be sine theta cosine theta. Uh, let me check. Yeah, I think this should be uh, sine theta, and the third one is cosine. Uh, wait a minute, yeah, cosine. The third component is cosine theta. Uh, switch. Yeah, this should be uh, sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta. Yeah. All right. So now I can describe an arbitrary curve from from here to here by by sigma. See that T and C of T, right? right? So C that T, and when C that equals zero, right? You can assume that T is between zero and uh, and uh, and the web, right? When C that equals zero, C. Uh, so where it starts, you can start from Q, you can start from zero, right? Cos and C that. I think the sequence is from zero, okay? And uh, then theta one is going to be alpha, okay? And the phi one is going to be also zero, okay? Yeah. So you get the alpha and the zero. All right. Yeah, so the lens. Okay. The lens square. Actually, this is the second fundamental, uh, the first fundamental form, right? Yeah. So the, uh, the so what we got I remember is going to be uh, it's going to be uh, theta prime t square plus cosine square theta and the c prime t square. Okay. Yeah, this is a this actually follows from the, the, the first fundamental form. Uh, you can you can you can show that you know you can you can gather this and uh, you can compute it and then you will get. Uh, let me check. Double check. Yeah, possibly it's a science here. Okay, okay, I guess. Let me double check, okay? So, if you forget the first one on the top, you just differentiate by yourself. So you will get, okay, you will get differential with respect to theta. So the cosine theta, cosine phi, uh, cosine theta, sine phi, negative sine theta, at the theta prime, okay? And plus, it differentiate with respect to uh, that's right. So the second part that's negative sine theta and uh, that'll be sine phi uh, positive cosine theta cosine phi and zero phi prime. Okay. So 
So when you find the lens, and uh, the middle to, uh, the, the dot top part of this here. So you just needed to find the uh, this the first vector square. So it's a square cosine square. So actually, the C dot times square. And this one actually, I have a, a, a differentiate sine theta sine. Yeah, this is sine. So sine square theta and three times square. Okay, so make a correction. No, I forgot. Doesn't matter. This uh, this is sine theta. Okay. All right. So now the length of I mean arbitrary curve. Is the integral from zero to one, right? Dt. And the U was, uh, this, this is actually square log. Okay. Since this second part is, uh, is always non negative, so you got this, right? And you take. This. And then this is going to be from zero to sigma prime dt. Right? And that is going to be theta uh, one minus theta zero. Right? Theta zero is zero. So this is just alpha. Okay. Alpha is a, is a length of the, this is going to be the length. of the short red circle. Okay, uh, joining P and Q. Right? Okay. So we see that, right? So look at the picture, right? We look at the picture, this is alpha, the angle alpha is just the length of this point. The length of this alpha. Okay. Right? So this is as uh, a gray circle. Okay, otherwise, arbitrary curve. Okay, so we show that the grand circle has a shortest length joining these two points. Okay, so grand circles are called grand circles are called geodesics on S2. Okay. Okay. Now you will only consider only consider um, triangles, okay? A triangle. Let's focus on triangle. A triangle on sphere right, consists of three sides. Okay, which are, which are the arcs of the great circle? So you have a sphere. Those are the, uh, because if each of them is a great circle, then then this is called a triangle, okay? So let's draw the square circle. Uh, on the equator, it looks like that. This is a point, yeah. So this is a triangle on the Earth. When we draw a triangle on the Earth, the Earth is very large, right? And the triangle may be compared, what you draw it on the ground is compared to the Earth, right? It's almost, uh, it's a flat, right? So just like, on the, it looks like a, a triangle on the, on the flat. Right, but actually an arbitrary triangle looks like that, okay? Larger triangle. So those are the grass, uh, those are the grass circles. Uh, I should have corrected the picture. It does not look like a triangle on the screen. If you draw the grass circle, it's gonna be like that, okay? So now you have a, uh, you have a, uh, so you have a, uh, this is alpha angle. And then you have a, uh, 
I don't know what happens to some of them. Okay. So we want to study the relationship between, between this side A. This side is B, the corresponding angle is beta. And this is a gamma, and uh, this is side of C. A is a length, okay? The length of uh, the length, arc length, okay? Arc length, B is also the arc length. Alpha is length. We want to find the relationship between uh, among the ABC, capital ABC, and alpha beta gamma. So there are some uh, relationships between. Yeah, and uh, before we do that, let's, uh, yeah, what does a, uh, yeah. What is a relationship among alpha, beta, gamma, A and B and C, okay? We want to study this problem. Before we do that, let's look at the picture here. So this is a sphere. Okay. And uh, for this sphere, which is a radius, uh, uh, you know, we are a radius is always equal one. So I have a two points. I want to kick rate. Okay, this is two points. Uh, this is a, a vector P, vector Q, right? So there's the angle here, alpha, right? So the distance on the picture, so the distance uh, S2, P and Q is just equal to alpha, all right? 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 The angle, because this is unit here. The angle between, we just proved that, right? Angle between E and the Q. Those are the unit vector. This is unit Q. Okay. Now, if you're in the three dimension space, right? We know that cosine alpha equals T dot Q. Right? But this is a unit vector, so uh, so just equal to the product. And in other words, the cosine of the distance between two vectors on the sphere is going to be the dot product of these two. So that's how do you calculate the distance. Okay. Okay, now we come to the Sophia. We have a map, right? Uh, it's kind of a map. We we identify this is a plane S two. We identify it was a was a was a was a was a plane, complex plane. Okay. So here's a map, right? Q, send it to here. Uh, that's a pi of Q. Yeah, if we, uh, well, I still use the F here, okay? Let me draw the picture. This is still F, okay, that's P. But this plane is, uh, is uh, identified with, uh, with a C, right? So there's identification here. 
Okay, this is identification. How can I do that? Um, yeah, the identification is given by sigma t u plus i v. Right, it's going to be x to the y to the z, and actually just u v, u and v. Right, so that is identification. So now you have from here to here, it's my time, right? And then remember, we call that pi omega, if omega is v plus iv, is given by the formula. Okay, let's record this, okay? So now, Now we want to find the formula. So the distance between by the above formula, see we have above formula here, right? So this is two points. Yeah, you have a two different points here, W, uh, W and another point, another complex number Z, for example, right? So this is two points, one is a Q here, other one is a, another point, okay? So this is a, a will be a pi inverse of W, and this is another point pi inverse of z, right? The inverse of pi z. So the angle between them is a uh, cosine ds pi omega, right? By definition, uh, by the above formula, just a dot for that. Now the so dot product when you uh, when you multiply this out using complex numbers, right? So what you got here, uh, you can show that. Okay, so the dot product means this one times this, right? And the W plus W bar. Okay, the product is Z plus Z bar, right? And here W, now we have a, we have another I here, be careful, okay? So the dot product, Z minus Z bar. And I think I'm going to change this one to the top. Uh, not necessarily, so it's actually there's a negative sign here. Yeah, because I square is going to be negative. Plus, and multiply this out. Okay. After you multiply this out, you are simplified, and you get uh, you get a formula, something like that. Looks slightly better. Right. And this will be one minus W square and one minus Z square or Z square minus one. Uh, I prefer the other one. Uh, yeah. so this is where I come from. So the norm of W square minus the norm of Z square minus. So, uh, so use, use the complex numbers, you can calculate the distance between two points on the sphere. All right. 
there is uh, another even simpler formula we find out. Okay. We find out if I use a tangent square half of theta, that's going to be one minus cosine theta, one plus cosine theta. Okay. Using this formula, this is my theta, right? This is angle theta. So, uh, yeah, theta is going to be the distance between S2. Okay. So using, I already have a cosine theta formula. So I plug them into the formula. Okay. Then I get, after I simplify, I get a very simple form. Okay. Which is going to be W minus the norm square. Okay, this norm square. All right, that's what, uh, that is great. You know, that uh, looks much simpler, right? So tangent half of theta is going to be, that is going to be this. Okay, let me go back to the formula again. Okay. Theta is a distance between two points. So let's go back to this three. Okay. And there is a map corresponding map to C. Okay. This is a map, right? So in the two points, that's a my C. Okay. Here's W. This is a Z. Two points on this, on this complex plane. And you have two points here. Okay. And the distance between them is going to be the angle theta, okay, which can be determined by our formula. Okay, so the theta is, uh, is nothing but the, the distance. Theta is going to be the distance on the sphere between those two points. Now that's a much simpler formula. Then you can find uh, you can find uh, you can determine the distance using the complex number. Okay, this the map pi is a is a pretty standard, right? Yeah, it's easy to see the uh, uh, it's easy to to construct it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, how to find the, the direct map? Right. If you have a, that's a good exercise, okay? Given the point Q, X, Y, Z, okay, uh, on the ST, find the formula pi of Q, <laughs> okay? Find the formula. This is a, in, the, in the complex. Here. Okay, which is complex one. In terms of, uh, of X, Y, and the Z. And think about it, okay? I hope you can quickly write down lines. All right, so here's a picture, okay. So pi, uh, uh, F, X, Y, Z is going to be the map, is going to be the point X to the Y to right? This corresponds to a vector in R2, right? And that corresponds to, by this by sigma, I think, sigma two, okay. 
this corresponding to x theta plus i y two. And this is in this in r two, this in c. Okay. This is in the s two. That is in the sphere s one. S2 is a point. Okay, that's a thing. Now, if you draw this, it's very clear, right? And this is a, my map pi xyz is just x, x2 dot plus pi y2. Okay, just all the way here from here to directly to that point. That's a pi, okay? You can know all the stuff in the middle. Okay, so we already know that x is going to be, right? X is a, x is a, is, uh, yeah, we do have the problem. Yeah, x over one minus z. Right? Y is y one minus z. That's it. It's very simple. Right. Well, very often we use the inverse of that, not not in this direction. But if you want to project everything on the sphere onto, onto R2 or onto C, and this is a map you can use. We call it talking about projection, right? So whatever uh, picture you see on the sphere, you can get the projection of that picture on R2, okay? So how, how does it look like, right? This is a, for example, uh, you may have a, you know, let's see, I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, so around the equator, okay, let's imagine this is a picture. Okay. How does it look like on the, on the image on RS2? Okay, and the top one is yellow. The bottom is blue, okay? The map we are going to have, this is R2, okay? Uh, it's a circle here. So this will be pictures like that, okay? And maybe the other side is longer. Okay, which one should be the yellow color? I think this is the yellow color, okay? Okay. The reason is that, uh, The reason is when you draw the uh, uh, line, right? It's going from north to the south. Side. So the intersection is here. So this is a Q, that's a point of P. But when you draw, when you, when you draw the passing through three parts here, so that is a, the, 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 the header, okay? So the picture, if I want to draw uh, here together, I probably have to draw like this. Okay, so this will be the yellow part, the shadow. Right, this will be the shadow onto the next side, or onto the plane. Okay. Uh. All right. So now finally, let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at uh, the following theorem. Uh, for a triangle, on, on a sphere, right? For a triangle on the sphere, Right. 
This angle is alpha and this side is A. This angle is beta, that side is B. This angle is gamma, that side is C. So the triangle looks like that, okay? We have the following relationship. Cosine gamma is gonna be cosine C. Okay, all the arc lengths is less than pi, okay? All equal to pi. Minus cosine A, cosine B. Sine A, sine B. We also have the following identity. Sine alpha, sine A equals sine B over, uh, this is the beta and the B. Now, how do you prove this? It can be proved in the following way. So this way is the center. So let's draw this here. This is a sphere, right? So this is a center. So for the center, I can draw the lines here. This is a vector B. This is a vector C. This is a vector A. Okay. We know that. And what do we are given? We are given cosine A. Because I know what is cosine A. Cosine A is a B dot C. Cosine B is A dot. Mm. Cosine A is a, you know, is yeah, capital A has a lens, arc lens, right? It's a B and a C. So B, for the B, uh, for the arc lens of B, that's A. Let me double check my labeling. That this should be. Yeah, let me check how the, so, this arc lens is from B to C, right? And the cosine B is the distance, and the B is the distance from this to that. So it's A and the C, right? Yeah. Cosine C is a capital C, and okay? that will be A and the B. Okay, that's clear. Yeah, look at this, right? So this is determined by this two triangle. Uh, this two uh, two vectors, right? The so axis. Yeah, remember uh, we have the formula, right? If we have a point Q and another point Q, and that's the angle of theta, the arc length uh, is going to be the distance between P and the Q. Cosine this is going to be the dot product, okay? The same, right? So this is the angle. Okay. And the distance between, yeah. Here the Q on the sphere is the angle, theta. So that is a theta, okay? All right, now what is gamma?
you have to figure out what is gamma. The gamma is a tangent of vector. Right? Gamma is tangent of, uh, is the angle between those two tangent lines. Oops. Let's draw two lines. Yeah, let's put it. This is a one tangent direct, another tangent direct. Okay, how to determine the angle between those two tangent directs? Okay, Well, we look at the tangent vector, okay? This tangent vector actually is, uh, is on the line passing through the, determined by C and the B, okay? So, yeah, maybe it's really difficult to see at this point, yeah. The tangent, this is I'm going to call the uh, vector A, right? Let's call the vector A. Uh, no, I, I should use uh, another notation. Uh, let's see, I'm going to use that one uh, V vector, okay? That one is a U vector. Okay. So cosine gamma, is a vector u dot v, right? Two unit vectors. And now they're not necessarily unit vectors, just the idea. But we don't know how to find the u and the v. Right? We don't know how to find the u and the v. What we can find out is a normal vector to the plane, right? v actually, is perpendicular to, to B and C, these two vectors, right? So uh, the vector V, yeah, let's take a look at the vector V is perpendicular uh, the, the plane passing through uh, the center and tending to that. It's actually is perpendicular to to, to B and C, okay? Uh, there's two vectors. So how do I see that? Okay, this is a gray circle. So I draw the plane passing through the center and this gray circle, A. And then V is a tangent vector in the plane. There's a normal vector to the plane, okay? Uh, so this, ten, this, uh, this plane is determined by B and C. All right, so, so B and the C is a vector, B cross C is a normal vector to the plane passing through uh, the arc length. Okay, this is a center O, and then this is a, this is a two point passing through the three points. Okay, and so that's why it is, and then A, uh, U is a perpendicular, let's say U is a perpendicular and, uh, and that will be A and the C. Okay, so those are, the two, those are the two normal vectors. Now you can replace UV by the normal vectors. Okay, and you get the same result. That's why, how do you find the angles, right? So this is a A and the C. This is a this is a key point. It transfer uh, okay. That's a key point. Okay. Then you uh, yeah. Then you uh, multiply this out, and you will get this is still a plus c, and here is a, a dot b and the C dot C minus D dot C. And uh, this is a from linear algebra. So A dot C. Okay. 
Okay, then each of them has a geometry meaning here. A dot C, if you look at the map picture, A dot C is, is, a, a, is, a, is a cosine C, okay? So that is gonna be cosine C, and that's a unit vector. That's a cosine A, that's cosine B, okay? And there's a, this one actually is sine A, that's a sine B, this one is B, okay? Uh, the cross product, remember the cross product of two vectors. Yeah, if this is a B, that's a, that's a C, that's a both a unit of vectors. Then this is the angle, you know, angle, uh, this is angle uh, B, okay? Then B dot C is gonna be cosine B. But the B cross C is a norm, this can be sine B. Okay? So that's why you transfer that. So now we get a proof. Uh, we, uh, we, 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 we get the answers cosine gamma equals cosine C minus cosine A, cosine B, sine A, sine B. And here A, B are, are our claims. Okay? Also the corresponding angle. So we have two sets of angles here. So let's go back to the picture, okay? Uh, uh, this is our arc lens, right? And this is A. So A is uh, actually the angle, this is the center. Okay, this is the center. A is the angle actually, the angle corresponding. A is the angle actually, okay? And uh, A is the angle formed by these two uh, vectors from the origin. Okay. And this is the alpha, this is another angle, it's on the sphere, okay? And this will be the gamma, and that's a C, okay? And the C is also the angle so there's two sets of angles. The angles at its origin, determined by the three lines, right? And the angles are the spheres between two red circles. Okay. So, yeah. So C is this angle, actually, right? C is the length of this, this side, but the angle, it's actually the angle at the center, at the center. Okay, formed by this two. Okay, so this vector uh, we call the uh, what is? It? Yeah, let's go back to my notation. Yeah. Okay. So if this is a uh, a, the vector a, that is a. Uh, Vector B, the vector C. And this is vector C. So the A is actually the, is again with the angle, with the length. Okay, is the length of the arc. Okay. Uh, determined by B, the vector B and the C. Okay. 
So that's why cosine A equals B dot C. Okay. Which is different from the angle alpha here, corresponding to the arc C. Right, so there's a two sets of angles. Those are the angles A, B, capital A, B, C are the angles at the center, the geometry here. The alpha, beta, gamma are the angles, the interior angles of the triangle on the C here. Okay, so those are two sets of angles that are related by, by, by the above formula. Cosine gamma is going to be, uh, cosine gamma is going to be, So, uh, so how about the second identity? Second identity, we still go back to the picture, uh, the UZ, okay, UZ, you, you, we, we tried to find the angle between U and the V, but it's hard, right? What we did is uh, you use uh, uh, the normal vector of the plane. So, so you will get uh, cosine alpha, right? Remember, we use a cosine alpha and we use a sine alpha. Sine alpha is going to be because the angle sine gamma. Sine gamma is the angle uh, uh, B dot C, right? And that uh, A prime, right? And uh, that is uh, the length divided by. Okay, so the, the above dot product actually one can get is, uh, one can show that this, it's just linear algebra, okay? So it's A cos C and uh, dot B, okay? So actually is a uh, determinant of the, of the, of the matching formed by this three vector. B and the C actually here sign A, that will be sine, uh, this is the angle sine V, okay? So if you use this identity, okay, if you use this identity, yeah, sine A is going to be also, but this B, C are unidirected, so, so don't worry about that. So that's why, So now sine gamma, sine C is sine A, sine B, sine C. All right, but this one, but this one actually is a new method is always the same, doesn't matter, okay? The new method doesn't matter which variable you choose, uh, which one you first. It's always the same. Actually, this is a volume formed by the three vectors. Uh, yeah, divided by three. So this is the same. That's why uh, similarly, sine alpha, sine A is also sine A, sine B, sine C. The only difference here uh, is going to be, uh, yeah, it's still A plus the same. Okay, so that's why they are all equal to the same thing. All right, so 
Uh, I think this is all we needed to know about the triangles on the on the on the on the sphere. Okay, so it's possible the the sum of the interior angle is going to be uh, 270, 270 uh, degree. Okay, so it's possible that. Uh, the sum of the interior angles is going to be 270 degrees as greater than 180 degrees for the triangle on the sphere. That's my own comments. Okay, in general, this is always greater than 180 degrees. Okay, in general, it is always greater than 180 degrees. Okay. Ah. Yeah, the reason is uh, there's a, if you have a triangle like that, and this is the area. So the area is going to be K is in two angle, alpha, beta, gamma, the alpha plus beta plus gamma minus 180 degree, which is pi. So this is always greater than zero. So alpha plus beta plus gamma is always going to be greater than pi on this sphere. Okay. Now, question: How do we, how do we prove that? Uh, I don't think I'm going. I'm going to show this. Okay, but I just give you the fact that in the in the future, uh, we have the uh, very important formula given by Gauss, and that gives you uh, it's just corollary of it. It's very general thing, and but I just want to tell you on the on the sphere. The interior angle of three tri uh, a triangle is always greater than pi. Okay? The difference is actually tells us the area, how large of the area. Okay? How large of the area. So be careful when you when you when you measure uh, the three points on the earth, if they're far away, too far away from each other, then you get an angle at each point, and the sum of the three angles should be greater than uh, Greater than uh, uh, 180 degrees, okay? and uh, the farther away, the, the sum is getting larger because the area is getting larger. Okay? This is on the unit sphere, okay? Be careful, but the unit sphere. So it's so so. How do you construct this the triangle with the interior angles 270 degrees? You make sure each angle is 90 degrees, okay? So three times nine is 370. And uh, uh, just use a great circle and use another great circle to compare to each other. Okay, this is a picture. Okay, this is the equator. And then you, you find another angle uh, uh, great. Okay, put them to 90 degrees. Then you, then you choose, and then we choose another one, right? So uh, yeah, choose another one. Let's also have a 90 degree here, right? 90 degree there. And this gray circle, that gray circle, this gray circle. And, uh, and this triangle you are going to get 390 degrees in two angles. Okay, so the interior angle is 390 degree, uh, 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 200, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be three pi, right? So what is the area of this region? You know, you cut, uh, yeah, cut the ball into uh, eight equal sides, right? So, so that area, that piece of area is going to be three pi minus pi should be equal to two pi, right? Right. Uh, no, uh, three, three it's pi of, uh, sorry, it's pi over two. Five or two, but how many pieces here? You have a four, eight pieces. So the area of the whole sphere is eight times five or two, which is four pi. Okay, that is the truth. The area of the, of the whole sphere is four pi. Unit sphere. Okay, so let's stop again.